to you all oh how are you all doing i hope you are all doing well by the grace of god i welcome you all let's have a little talk please let's talk share and invite somebody yes invite a sister tell a sister to come tell a brother to come tell them we have to correct some errors in the body of Christ today. I call it errors in the church today. Errors in the church today. Things that people are doing that they think, oh, they are at the right path, but they are going wrong. We need to correct them. We need to correct them. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, we invite you to come and speak through me. Father, I pray that come and lead me. Let me speak of your counsel. Let me not speak of my counsel. In the name of Jesus Christ, every soul that will hear me uh, from afar, those that have just logged in, those that will that will that will watch it later, Father, I pray you touch their heart. You lead them to the right path, so that at the end, glory and honor will be ushered unto your name. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I pray. Hallelujah. God bless you once again. Merry Christmas. Before I continue, let me show you a video. Let me play a video that I saw. And this video, the very moment I saw, it started speaking to me. The Holy Spirit started speaking, communicating with my heart. I said, God, are we really on the right path? Are we really doing the things that praises you? Are you doing things that you like? When you come and meet us in how we are serving you, are you going to take us along? Are you going to take us along? Just watch this video. Let me volume it. Just a minute. Let me start. You see? Watch this video. Watch this video. You see? see? Let me let me reverse it. See? Watch the video. When you finish, I will I will talk about it. Just watch this video. They are praying, you know. They are praying, praying to God. You see the error that they are bringing in the body of Christ today. And when you go to many churches, this thing that I'm praying to you, they are doing it. When it is time for prayers, it is that like we are dancing gabaja. When it is time for prayers, this is praying. You know, let me pray it again. Listen to the, the, the voice again. Just listen. Let me. Lift up your voice wherever you are. <laughs> you see the madness going on in churches. And many of you in those churches, you don't see it is error. You don't see. There is time for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There is time for everything on earth. When it is time for prayers, know that you are in the presence of a, a, a great king. Ask yourself this question. Can you go and stand in the presence of an earthly king? Claiming you are praying or you are putting a petition and dancing in this form. You know, when you do something, when you go to the presence of God and you are doing something, just compare to an ethnic king. There are many ethnic kings that are some dress code you cannot dress and enter that palace. There are so many palaces when you enter there, there are, there are restrictions that you need to follow before you can enter that palace. 
You cannot go there with any dress anyhow. You cannot go and stand in the presence of every king and misbehaving like this. Claiming you are dancing, you are crazy, you are on fire for God. The youth, we need to correct them. We need to correct them. Those that have just joined, let us let me just play the video again. How people play today in church, how they pray. I have series of the of the video. I will be I will be bringing it out one after the other for you to know that if you're doing such a thing in the presence of God, it is error. You walk out from the presence of God with a curse instead of a blessing. You walk out from the presence of God with a curse instead of a blessing. When you go and misbehave as if you are you, you are in in a pub or you are in 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 in, in this uh, when this um uh, high life artists when they when they when they orga, organize their their, 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 their how do you call it when they organize they are poor parties and people are dancing. This is the same dance that you want to take to the presence of God. It is error. So our youth that have started learning all this madness, it's quite time you stop. If you are on fire for God, let it be through your deeds. Be on fire for God doesn't mean you should go to the church and dance a crazy dance. And many of the women, you see them dead that they'll go and twerk. They'll go and shake their big booty. All these things that you are doing, you are not doing to glorify God. You are doing to glorify the devil. You can do it in your home. It's your own home. You can do it in the street. It's your own body. But do not go to the presence of God. Do not go to the presence of God and misbehave. It is error. It is error. And the pastor is busy saying, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice. You know, all these things, we, the men of God and women of God, we have to teach the people the ways of God. We have to teach them the do's and the don't of God. Remember, he is the same God that went and brought the people of Israel from Egypt. He is the same God that packed in the earth to swallow 23,000 people within a day. He is the same God. Do not joke with God. Do not joke with God. If you want to dance your actually your worldly dancing, go to where this high life artists are playing their music. Go and dance there. Do not take it to the presence of God. Do not take it to the church. This thing that is going on in the church today, it is madness. It is madness. People say we are on fire. You know, so you are on fire and you go and do this in the presence of God. Can you go and stand keeping your, your earthly father? Your father, can you go and do this in the presence of your father? Your father. Just imagine. Just imagine. Just imagine. And see, the man of God is also busy, happy with how they are doing. We have to correct them. We have to correct them. This is not the accepted way of praying. This is not the accepted way of praying. And nowadays, you know, many pastors when they are even during prayers, prayer warriors today, they do not lift any prayer point. You see that what is this? What is this that we are introducing into the body of Christ? What is this that we are encouraging? This is not the right way. This is not the right way. Jesus Christ led an exemplary life. The disciples taught, taught him, teach us how to pray. He taught them how to pray. All these things that we are doing, we are doing to glorify the devil. We are not doing to glorify God. We are not doing to glorify God. And we need to warn ourselves. We need to advise our sons and daughters that if they have any place to fool, it must not be the, the, the house of God. If there is any place to misbehave, it must not be the house of God. If there is any place to exhibit their nonsense and their foolishness, it must not be the house of God. The house of God must be a holy place, a place that you respect. The, 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 the presence of God. You respect the presence of God there. And you know, some of these people that go there to dance all these crazy dances, after they finish dancing, they will not sit there to listen to the preaching. All these people that you see them dancing all these crazy dances, that the pastor will not rise up to correct them. You know, once upon a time, when I used to attend the Church of Methodists, that was when I, I moved to uh, Kumasi, that is Ashanti region in Ghana. When I moved to Kumasi, there was a woman that was in charge 
of the church of Methodist. This woman was so straight. When you come and dance this crazy dance, you see she'll come into the crowd and pull you out and tell you this is not a place to do this. But nowadays pastors, nowadays churches, we allow the men to do things that will, that will bring curses upon their life instead of blessings. We need to correct them. Please share the broadcast for me. I will not keep long tonight. You meet for midnight prayers. You mean, so I'm not going to waste much of your time and I'm not going to waste your data. I just want to explain and correct so many mistakes that is going on in the body of Christ today that people do not talk about it. It is error. It is error for you to go and dance a watery dance. Those days in Ghana, there was a dance they call it Azoto. And when you go to many of the churches, many of the young boys will take that Azoto dance from that watery dance to the church, to the altar. And you see our praise and worship team on the altar, they will also be dancing that Azoto. Azoto. I oh no, all these are not, it is not Christianity. All these things that we are doing that nobody is correcting us, it is not the ways of God. God do not appreciate it. God is not in agreement. We are mocking God. You know, the Bible said that I, there is a time, a, a time is, uh, there is going to be a time that mockers and scoffers, scoffers and mockers, people that will mock Christianity will come. People that will mock the ways of God will come. People that, that will mimic, I call it mimic. If, it, if a pastor is praying, they'll be mimicking them. If somebody does something, if in people's tongues, they'll be mimicking. You know, when you go to TikTok, there are a lot of this nonsense going on. And you know, people call, calling themselves children of God, they are the people using these things. They are the people you do not know that you are mocking God. You do not know that what you are doing is against the will of God. Oh, my dear, you are welcome. I think today you've been able to join. God bless you. Yes, we are mocking God. We are mocking God. And the Bible is saying God is not to be mocked. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. It says God is not to be mocked. Nobody can mock God. So if you go to the presence of God and you think you are on fire, do it according to your deeds, not dance. No crazy dance, not dancing a crazy, not a crazy move. And you know, many of these ladies, you see their breasts, they wear something that will pump their breasts. Their breasts are under the eye. It is choking them. Their breasts are so higher, up, exposing all this area. And we see them dancing. Some of them, even their breasts will come out from their bra, outside. And they will take it and put it inside. Oh, this is craziness. It is craziness. You are not on fire for God. If you are on fire, go to the street and win souls. If you claim you are on fire, go to the street and win souls. Those that are on fire for God, they are on the street. They are sacrificing their souls to win souls. For God Almighty, they are the people on fire. Not to standing in the auditorium and dancing a crazy dance. And you see many pastors, <laughs> even their dance, hey, they will tell you David, dan but David dancing, but they never saw David once, or once dancing. They will tell you it is David dance, but they didn't see David dancing. They'll be dancing and twerking, shaking in the presence of God. I know we have, we have to be happy. We have to dance and praise God. But you know, what they dance shouldn't be carried to the church. We should not carry watery dance because any sign that these watery people dance that we do not understand that we just see it and emulate. It has a meaning. It has a meaning. If a watery person do that like this, it has a meaning. He is glorifying Satan. It has a meaning. It has a say. So if you, you go to the presence of God and you just pick what they are doing and you go and do it, say, oh, this thing that they have been doing, I, I love it. I want to do it. I saw this sign somewhere. I want to present that same sign. You do not know the meaning of that sign. You do not know the meaning of that thing. And this error must be deleted very soon, quickly. We should delete it. We should delete it. Mother, speak to your young boys. Speak to your teenagers as 31st is coming. You see, all oh, this thing, this is what they are going to do. As 31st is coming, this is what they are going to do. After they finish dancing their crazy dance, they will not listen to the word of God. They will not listen to the message from God. The message that God has for them through the man of God or through that woman of God. They will not waste, they will not, they will not even open their ears to listen. Because many of these people dancing this crazy dance, many of them are under the influence of alcohol. Many of these young men dancing this crazy dance, many of them, majority of them, they are under the influence of alcohol. 
Then you'll be dancing, dancing. If you're a man of God and somebody come and do such a thing, hold a person and say, my guy, this is not a place to dance such a dance. They will tell you you are a cake. Let them tell you you are a cake. If you are a man of God or a woman of God and you want to do what pleases your, the members in the church, if you want to do what pleases the people rather than what pleases God, you stand as an enemy to God. If you want to do what pleases the church members, rather than what pleases God, you will stand as enemy to God. So all the time, correct the people, correct the youth, correct them. The Bible said there is a way that seemed right in the sight of man, but the end of that way is the way of destruction. It's the way of destruction. That, that way may be looking good. Oh, we have, let us dance in the presence of God. I'm not saying dancing in the presence of God is wrong. No. I dance. I'm the kind of person that I like dancing. But when you go to the presence of God, know how to behave. Know how to behave. I read a story in the Bible. And this is a story that a king, an arrogant king, a king full of pride and arrogance. You know, those days, it was only the Levites. That was supposed to enter into the tabernacle and work on the altar of God. This king took it upon himself to go into that sacred room, to go and offer sacrifice on the altar that nobody was supposed to enter and offer sacrifice. They prevented him. He ignored them. He ignored everybody, entered into, entered into the room, the, uh, the, 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 the tabernacle, went straight to the altar to make sacrifice. And the Bible says instantly he was, he was, he was afflicted with leprosy. He was afflicted with leprosy. I will use this opportunity to speak to many parents hearing me this moment. Please teach your children that church is not a place to joke. Many of you that you go to church and leave your children to be praying with the instrument. Remember, it is an instrument that we use to glorify the almighty God. It is an instrument that we use to worship God. Though the Bible says you should allow the children to come to me, they that the kingdom of God belongs to them. Many of these children are possessed. Many of these children, they misbehave based on the spirit that is using them. I know some children, those days when we used to go to church, when we used to sit with the Sunday school children. Some mothers, as soon as they come to church and they are, they, 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 the preacher have not started preaching, their children are okay. Their children are not asked for a uh, sweet. Their children will not start crying. But as soon as the preacher start preaching, it is that these children, it's like something is pinching them. It is like something is in their throat. These children will cause their mother until their mother pick the child and go out. So all the preaching that the preacher will preach, the mother will not hear eh in the ears. Those children, they are under manipulation. Those children, they are not doing it according to their own. They, something is pushing them. When the word of God is coming, what have been bestowed in those children do not want to hear the word of God. So they will cry for you to walk out with, with your child. So there are many mothers ever since they gave birth, they have never sit in the church to listen to preaching. When it is time for preaching, it is that their children yeah, 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 and they have to walk out because the child will be disturbing the peace of others. Those children, confront, tell your pastor to deliver your child. Don't feel shy. Tell your pastor, pray for my child because this child do not want to hear the word of God. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If this child do not want to hear the word of God, how can he get wisdom he can get a worldly wisdom but the word of god said the wisdom of god is what is needed of every man what every man needs is the wisdom of god not the earthly wisdom or earthly wisdom the wisdom of god so many of you that your children do not allow you to listen to preaching many of you also go to churches with your children your children will never sit in sunday school when they are teaching them they will never sit there they will never sit in Sunday school to hear what is happening there. No, they don't want it. They do not want the word of God. They are possessed. They are possessed. Deliver them earlier before it's too late. Do not allow your children to be roaming in churches, going up and down. You know, the church is a place that you can, you can get blessing. The same place that you can get a curse is the church. The same place you can, you can come with a breast, you can come with a breakthrough. It is the same place that you can return with a curse. So when you go to church, 
Have it in mind that you are going to meet a great king. Prepare yourself. That is why I keep telling people we don't dress anyhow to church. Because when God comes and sees you half naked, your blessed is exposing. When God comes and meets you in a, in, a, in a transparent cloth, that they can see your pant and see your beast in the church, will God speak to you? If in earthly king, if the earthly king gives you invite or you want to see him, you want to tell him what you are going through, and you dress anyhow, and go and sit at the waiting room, waiting for this earthly king to come and speak to you. And he come and he just eye you top and down. And he said, where did you come from? He said, well, I'm from this city. Do you live with your parents? Or are you with your husband? He said, yes, yes. My husband is there. He said, so your husband saw you coming with this thing. What did your husband tell you? Oh, he didn't tell me it. My husband is comfortable because my body belongs to him. You've forgotten that God Almighty say, your body is my temple. Your body is my dwelling place. And whoever, whosoever would destroy or defile the temple of God, he, that God Almighty will defile. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 16 to 17. So if you dress anyhow and go to the presence of God, thinking that is the place that you can exhibit your goose, that is the place that you can exhibit your big booty, that is the place that you can exhibit your big breast. God is not interested in your breast. He gave it to you. God is not interested in your big bottles. He is the one that created you. He can make them stain. God do not need all these things. He needs only your heart. He needs only your heart. So go with your heart. Don't go with your beauty. Go to the presence of God with your heart. Do not go to the presence of God with your beauty. Go with your heart. Go and exhibit what is in your heart. Not what is on your physical appearance. No, it is wrong. Let us correct ourselves. Let us correct all these things. Those days, those days, as you are growing in the body of Christ, <laughs> We saw so many things that those that went before us, they used to do. You know, those days at the end of every month or the beginning of every month. The beginning of every month, people used to send their first fruits. When we, call, when we say first fruit, the fruit that you harvest, if it is corn. When you harvest your corn for the first time, you take it to the presence of God. It is scripturalized. It is in Deuteronomy. It is God Almighty that ushered the Israelites to do that. We used to carry, people used to carry their sugar cane. People used to carry their banana. People used to carry all these things to the church for them to sell it. It wasn't wrong. It wasn't wrong. It is scripturalized. Nowadays, they've changed all these items. It has turned to be miracle water. It has turned to be anointing oil. It has turned to be handkerchief. It has turned to be our bundles. It has turned to be stickers, which is wrong. That error, we need to delete it now. We need to delete that error. It is error. All these items that they are selling, it is not people's first fruit. Those days, the items that we used to sell in the, in the church were the first fruit of people. And as, as time goes on, the churches discover that, oh, all this fruit, when they sell, they bring it to us, we sell it. So if they sell it and they bring the first seed, it is accepted. So they, they came in agreement that if anybody wants to give a first seed, if anybody wants to give a first seed, let the person sell it and, and, and turn it in the form of a cash and come and deposit it. You know, it is, it is allowed. Many of you don't do it. That is why any job that you enter, you find it difficult to, 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 to last long in that working place. Any job that you get, your first, your first seed, your first salary, you must share with God. Any job that you work, you you get, any job that you get, even if it's a cleaning job, your first seat must be on an altar for that altar to sustain you in every money, sustain, protect, preserve every money that comes in your hands. You know, those days our mothers that were increased, that, that were that that started, they started well, but in our days, because of greediness and selfishness, the pastors have managed to switch so many things to onto only them. Only them, which is wrong. That is why many Christians today, we are the broke people on earth. We are broke. We are broke. When you're looking for the, the religion, the religion that is broke, it is Christianity. We are broke. We 
are broke because there are so many things that those that cultivated Christianity, they used to do. We don't do this day. We do not do this day. Those days, their first food, they'll bring it. Those that do not have food to eat, they share with them. Those that do not have food to eat, you share with them. When you go to somebody, they throw me today. I do not want to go. I don't go. I don't want to go scripture because I will, I will not get time to read quotations after quotations. I'm coming to tell you what is in the Bible. You know, some part where God was ushering people, cautioning people on their tithes. He said as he said that if you can gather your tithe, go to a place, buy the food of your choice and eat. That means in the church. Once day we can gather all the tithe, make a get together, and eat together in that place that we call the name of our God. But now everything has changed. We swap everything to pastors, pastors, pastor and their wife, pastors and their children, pastors and their children. We've left the church, which is error. This error also must be deleted very soon, quickly. We must delete this selfish thing that we want to propagate in the body of Christ. When you read the book of Acts, as you started studying the book of Acts this month, when you study the book of Acts, you see the apostles, some of them, they sell their belongings. Some of them, they sell what belongs to them. They sell their property. They didn't sell and give to the pastor. They sell and share it among themselves. They share it among those that have believed that do not have. They share it among those that have believed that do not have clothing. Some of them will share their clothing with them. Some of them will share their shoes with them. That is Christianity. That is Christianity. That is what the church stands for. And nowadays, you don't see all these things. These things have been taken away from the body of Christ. It has been taken away this Christmas. I know many of you, you had it. Many of you bought expensive Christmas tree. But let me tell you the real truth. When you go to some villages, they couldn't even afford to buy a, a fowl. They couldn't even afford to buy a shoe to wear. They couldn't afford to buy. You and your family, you bought a Christmas tree. You bought a clothing. Christmas clothing. Or all colorful. Same color. Same design. You bought it. But I tell you, there are Christians somewhere that are sleeping empty stomach. There are Christians somewhere that do not have what to eat today. They have not seen that today is a celebration day. They do not know that today is a, a day that you see happiness. You know, many of us do know how, why we share the little dependent we have with others. We are from a background. Then we used to eat chicken once a year. It was during Christmas that our mothers were able to afford a, a rice with stew and chicken. It was only once a year. That is what we used to celebrate. We used to cherish Christmas because this is the season that no matter what you, you, you chew chicken, that is where we come from. That is the background that we come from. So we know how it is. How people are still feeling in that ground. How people are still building from that scratch. We know it. That is why we share the little we have with others. But the church today do not teach people about giving. The church today do not teach people about helping their neighbors. The church today do not emphasize about stretching their hands to those in need. It is only come and give. Come and sow seed for breakthrough. Come and make covenant with God for breakthrough. Come and do this with God. Come and do this one-on-one -on -one meeting. One-on-one -on, -one on Zoom. One-on-one -on -one video call. Come and register. It is all this. Beloved, today we are celebrating. We are, we are proclaiming about Christ. But who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the love. Whoever has love, have him. You may celebrate him. You may put a beautiful decoration in your home. But if you don't show love, you've not done it. Because the day that he was born... People went and gave gifts. Christmas is about gifts. Christmas is about sharing what you've gathered within the year. Sharing with others. 
Christmas is about you putting a smile in the face of others. Christmas is not about what people know. People want to do all kinds of things to for us to believe that Christian our uh, Christmas is a pagan. Uh, this 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 pagan that that that. I say no. God has never appeared to anybody with the Holy Spirit in dream that do not celebrate Christmas. How many of you have had that encounter? How many of you have seen Jesus Christ speaking to you in dream that never in your life celebrate Christmas? People are doing all kinds of things to delete the name of Jesus Christ. And we that are calling ourselves Christians, we are the one giving them ahead. Go ahead. And they are in their secret place. They are mocking us because they do not want to hear the name of Jesus Christ anywhere. They started from the Roman Empire that they wanted to cover. They wanted to delete the name of Jesus Christ from the day that they crucified him, that they wanted to cover his name. They've tried all their means, but it's not working. And they know that Christmas, during Christmas, a lot of people hear about Christian. A lot of people hear about Christ. Because at least people ask, what, what is Christmas for? And they will show you, once upon a time, there is a God that came in the form of a man to die and share his blood as an atonement for sinners like us to be saved. You will explain to the person and you win a soul. So people want to cover the word Christmas. But they, they jubilate when there is Halloween season. When the witches are celebrating their birthday or their, their, their festival, which is the Halloween. When they give holidays, they do not go to work. They say it is Halloween day, so we are off. They accept it. They will tell you, oh, this day, this day, this month, the year don't even begin from January. But they receive their salary at the end of the month. So all those with these feeble teachings, ask them, why don't you create your new calendar? So that the whole world will accept it. Why don't you correct the ones that you people are saying it is error? Why do, don't you do research? Because you have some theologians. So, uh, people that have studied theology, they have dig much into Christianity. They have, they are people that went before us. When you go, when you go, when you go, when you go, go, you see people that have dug deep, deep, deep into Christianity. They have done a lot of research. They have traveled to those places to, to find the rare evidence. They have not been able to create a new day. A new day, a new timetable, a new season. So how do you want us to cover it? And people are busy fighting each other. Sisters are fighting each other. Brothers are fighting each other. Sister is not speaking to a sister because the sister is celebrating Christmas. Brother don't want a, a, a sister to speak to her because he has warned the sister not to celebrate Christmas. And the sister is saying, for me, I will celebrate. So because of this, he does not speak. You know, the spirit of religion, if you allow the spirit of religion to enter you, you will hate, you will discriminate, you can never love, you can never praise God because the spirit of religion will teach you to hate. That if the person do not believe in your religion, hate him. If the person do not believe in your religion, do not support him. The spirit of religion will teach you to discriminate. You do not belong to this church. When you meet them, do not help them. When you do not belong to this religion, when they are in need, do not accept them. It is the spirit of religion. It is the spirit of religion. And if you allow this spirit to take over your life, you can never please God. The new commandment that Jesus Christ gave. The new commandment. John chapter 15 verses number 31 going. He say a new commandment I give you. That you love one another. By so doing. The whole world will know that you are my disciple. By so doing. By loving one another. By showing love. By showing love to one another. We are not Muslim. But I go to Muslim communities to donate. I'm not a Muslim, but I give to Muslim children. I'm not a Muslim, but I give to them. They are not Christians, but they bless my children. So what are you telling me as a child of God? To hate? The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor can be a pagan. Your neighbor can be a lesbian. Your neighbor can be a gay. Your neighbor can be a fetish priest. Your neighbor is your neighbor. That is the word. 
The word of God says, love your neighbor as yourself. If you're not able to love your neighbor, that means you can never love God. You can never love God. The Bible says, whoever says he loves God and hates his brother is in darkness. If you claim you love God and you hate a sister, you are in darkness. If you claim you love God and you do not want a sister to progress, you are in darkness. You have not discovered the light. And it's called time you wake up. It's time you wake up. This era of discrimination and using lies and deception and false doctrine to separate families. And it's quite time you study the word of God and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you his ways. Ask the Spirit of God to teach you to know what God loves, to know God hates what he hates and what he wants you to do. Yes. It's quite time you wake up from your slumber and let us stop all this madness that is going on in the church. Those days when we used to attend the church of Pentecost, when it is time for us to dance, it is the woman that will confess. After the woman finish dancing, you make a cue and the men, a decent dance. They will be dancing decently. Now, you see people, hey, 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 what is it? Now, we've introduced in Christianity. This is the reason why our children do not want to believe the doctrine of Christ. If you don't stop this madness, our children will leave and they will never know God. They will never accept the doctrine of Christ. Our children will leave. They will start despising God. And when I see, I hear some of the people, they will go and do their, they will, they will go to Google and go to wrong platforms that, that will not teach them the true ways of God. They will go to uh, 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 this pagan's website to study and they will come and tell you, oh, when you even go to history, according to history, they never believe in Christ. Those mad people that you see today, blaspheming God, they've once lived. The spirit of blaspheming has been there since Adam's time. The devil was there. The devil have lived years on earth before you were born. So the same spirit that have been entering into people to blaspheme today, that spirit have, that spirit have once upon a time used your great-great-grandfathers. When they died, they became empty. They searched for a new soul to use and they discovered you, that they are using you and they have connected you to the root of those mad and crazy people, blasphemers that once leave, they'll connect you to their website for you to go there and study and come and say, ah, <laughs> they said 25th December is the birthday of Nimrod. Where is it written? Where is it written? It's the day that they said to honor Jesus Christ, because he has once lived yesterday. Go to, go to the go, go, go. just go, go Nazareth, the city of Jesus Christ. Go and see how beautiful the place were decorated just to honor Jesus Christ. Go, go city of Nazareth, where Jesus Christ was, or was, was born or was taken to. Go, go that city yesterday, 25th. Go and see, go and see how they are honoring him. How they are honoring him. And you think you can sit in your village in Fabodia to use your mother, your, 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 your local dialogue. You can only deceive the people in that community. You cannot deceive people that can do research. People that can read and write. People that can read and write. How can you deceive them? I sit there when you say something, I can use three months to research. Until I find the truth, I will never believe. I research and I pray to God also to ask, to, to, to confirm the answer that I get. I take it to God. God, this thing that you are saying, what are you also saying about? Because the Bible said the spirit is in us. Jesus Christ said, John chapter 14, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send to you the comforter. And the comforter is with us. Some religious people are saying the comforter is a man. The comforter can never be a man. The comforter can never be a man. He can never be a prophet. The comforter is the spirit of God. And according to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 8, verse number 10, 
He said the spirit will live in us. It will speak to our heart and our mind. He will write it inside here and inside our mind. That nobody will tell us to know God. We know God from our childhood. So you know all these things. You research and you seek the wisdom of God. If you don't seek the wisdom of God all the time, you stand as an enemy to God. That is why you see some of your brothers, they are standing as enemy to God. They hate God. Many people, they hate God. There are some young men in their 30s, in their 35, when you mention the name of Jesus Christ, and they are closer to you, they feel like slapping you. Why have they developed such a hate for Jesus Christ? Why have they developed such a hate? It is a spirit that have used their great-great-grandfathers, and that spirit have gotten access to enter them, and is using them to fight the body of Christ. So if you are there and you have that blaspheming spirit, go for deliverance. If you are there and you feel like, let me blaspheme against God, it is a spirit that wants to use you. Once upon a time, maybe it has used your fathers. It has used your four forefathers. That is how many of you, your fathers will be sitting in a, a, a pub, in a, in a restaurant, they'll be taking their strong drink, they get drunk and they spit shit. They get drunk with alcohol and their, and their cigarettes, and their ganges, and they will start spitting shit. Yes, it's a spirit. If you allow yourself, that spirit will enter you. And if it, if it enters you, you are going to stand as an enemy to God. That is why the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. It said the word of God is foolishness to those that are perishing. But it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a salvation to those that are believed. It is foolishness to those that are perishing. Because they are heading towards destruction, they do not want to hear the word of God. Who is the word of God? John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The word is Jesus Christ. It has been there from Adam time. So Jesus Christ once proclaimed and said, before Adam, I was there. Before creation, I was there. He is the word. So when John was speaking about him in John chapter 1, verses number 1 to 5, that the, in the beginning was the word. Uh, according to Genesis, the Bible says he used his word to create. He used his word to create. And theologists, uh, those people that have studied, uh, theologists will tell you, when you study, they will tell you there was a pre-Adam world. There was a world before the creation. There, there was an era that was that used to exist. When you research all these things are there, you find all these things. But you know, I do not base on all these things because all these things you know all this history. You study to know all this history. People are busy study theology. People are busy study and geology. People are busy study Christ theology. You can study all these things, but if you don't repent, you go to hell because all these calculations, all these terms that you know. When you talk about angelology, the study of angels. When you talk about Christology, the study of Jesus Christ. People go to Bible schools to study all these things. When you go and study all these things and you come and still sit in your sins, Jesus will reject you at the end. So me, I don't find any relevance in all these history items. You, you learn it to get, to get knowledge about what you are believing. Because you cannot just wake up and say, I believe in Jesus Christ. So you, you don't know anything about Christ. You have to research so that so, somebody cannot sit somewhere and deceive you. Somebody cannot say someone and say something that will change your mind. I sit there, hey, you can even dissect my head trying to delay Jesus Christ. I'll still have it in my ears. Because I have dig underground. I have dig recently. I was studying about um that is Hinduism. And you know, I discovered that in Hinduism there was a scripture I cannot quote it well, but it was saying it, it was talking about the father and the son. And I said, if in this Hinduism that have been there. That has been there. All this why they believe in father and son. And Christianity believes in father and son. And people are saying God doesn't have a, a, a son. You know, all these things they are doing it because they want to, they want to divert your mind from Christ. Be stable. Don't be like a moving water in Christ. Have faith in God. Live a righteous life. All the time connect with God. Stay away from anything that is sin. Anything that is sin, the Bible says, whoever wants to live long, let that person derive, uh, uh, let that person move away from anything that is 
iniquity. It is only iniquity that will shorten your days. It is only sins that will shorten your days. So do away with sin. Live righteous life. Live righteous life. The, no, the first the first thing that everybody has to learn how to do, the, the, the one thing that everybody has to learn how to, how to do is to live a righteous life. Be upright. Be upright. Don't be the kind of person that you'll be looking for pro problems. Don't be the kind of person that you'll be fighting everybody around. Don't be the kind of person that you'll be moving with troubles. Many of you, you are moving troubles. When you move, when you reach this place, there is problem. Don't be the kind of person you can never live long. You see how people are dying? People will die more in the year ahead. The year 2022, people will die. You will hear massive death cases. You will hear massive death cases. The year 2022, you will hear massive death cases because the devil has started taking souls that belong to him from else. Those that are surrounded to him. I told you the other time in the midnight prayers, I told you there are many false prophets that are going to die in 2022. I'll repeat everywhere I sit. Everywhere I sit. I know many of them. I know their names. I'll not mention anybody's name because I don't have money to struggle with them in court. They have their money. I'll not mention their name. But I know many of them. I saw their names on their caskets. And many of them had their mm -hmm. casket have been decorated beautifully. Beautifully, their casket have been decorated beautifully, but they are going. Yes, the Lord said, I am taking them out. Many of those people misleading the church, the year 2022, you hear they are gone too soon. You hear they are obituary. You hear them. They are gone too soon. They are obituary. You hear them. And it is not underground pastors. They have name. They have name. They have name. They will go. They will go. If they don't repent, if they do not repent, they will go. There is one of the papas. He's in Ghana. I saw him. A recent time I started following him. I've seen his messages have changed. I've seen he has started preaching about salvation. He's a great man in Ghana. Big man. His message has started. I know he has seen that death threat. I know he has seen that God is warning him that if he doesn't change and teach his people his ways and, and turn away from the messages of prosperity, he is going to take him along. And you know, all those that I saw their name, I've been following them. I've, been, I've started monitoring them. I've started following them. Because I want to see if they have repented. I want to see if they, have, if they, if they have seen what we have seen. If they have seen with their eyes what we have seen, repent, live righteous, stop stealing, stop fornicating, stop defiling your temple. Do not let the world steal you. You know how the world has stole many people? The world has swallowed many people. The world has stole many people. And you know, the devil still creates so many things that is taking people from God. You know, our country here in, in Saudi Arabia, now they've tracked down, they've broke TikTok. TikTok is not working in our country here. They don't need that nonsense here. They don't need it. Because their children, it will teach their children worldliness. It will, it will expose their children to worldliness. They've tracked it. They said they don't need it. And it's not working here. WhatsApp call is not working here. WhatsApp call is not working in Saudi Arabia. It's not working. Yes? It's not working. If you want to, if you want to uh, make WhatsApp call, you have to be on a private network before you can you can receive WhatsApp call. You can make WhatsApp call. They, no, they want their city to be a holy city. They are preserving the people for God. They are preserving the people. They are doing their best that they can to make sure people live righteous. Live righteous. Here, when you you come, everybody we are in our house. When you want to go, I will just sit in our car, we drive. If you are going to the mall, we go there. If you are going to the park, where you can find people is most of the time on the park. That sometimes you go there to have fun, we go there to pray, we go there to for the children to go and pray. But everybody, when you go to our street, one day I will walk through our street. You know, I don't like walking around because one, once upon a time I, I was attacked by dogs. See, I don't go out. I was attacked by dogs. A group of dogs, they wanted to eat me out. I was walking in the street with my patients. 
Thank God our driver was with us. He rescued me. So from that time, I don't go out working. When I go, it's, I, I must go with her maid and the driver. The maid will be this side. The driver will be here and me and my boss will be in the middle. We'll be going. We'll be having our conversation and have our work. But for me alone to go outside, I fear. I fear. I fear this physical attack. I don't fear spiritual attack, but I fear physical attack. Yeah, so we go with car. You'll not see anybody in the street. You not see anybody in the street. Nobody is there. Maybe you have to go to the mall before you find people. Or you have to go to um, the praying ground or where they, they've set aside that, oh, people come and meet here. Families can come here and, and have fun. That is the place that you can go and find people. Here is the holy city. That's why many people, sometimes when I hear many people saying, oh, many of the African women, when they were in their country, they were not... They were not uh, doing the work of God. But when they traveled to this place, all of them have tend to be women of God. You know, here is a place that can guide you. It's a place that can shape you. I personally, I was shaped in Saudi Arabia. I, I knew how to dress in Saudi Arabia. It is this city that shaped me. It is this city that I had a physical encounter with God. I saw a sign in the sky. Signs and wonders. Physically, I wasn't asleep in the sky. It is this city. It is this city, and they preserve that thing for a long time. They will not let anything. Here, come here and try your, your fucking lesbianism here. You will take your head off. Come to this city and proclaim, be a woman and say, I'm a lesbian. As people are uh, uh, advocating on the media, come to my city here. Come here and proclaim your nonsense. By tomorrow, your head will not be there. It is a law. The Sharia law is working. And nobody is above the law. Whether you are a prince, whether you are a princess, whether you are a, a citizen, or you are you are an immigrant, or you are you are you are on you came on a pilgrim, whatever you are, the law is a law. Everybody must abide by it. So if you cannot abide by law, live in your country and do your nonsense. Here you can't bring it here. You cannot bring it here. It's a decent city, it's a decent place. You not see people exposing themselves in the city to seduce people. You not find it in, in Saudi Arabia. You can't. You not find it here. People walking naked as people are walking naked as if they are insane. Walking with only panties. Come and try that nonsense here. Come and try that nonsense here. I see the next day. Either you are sentenced to death by hanging or you'll be sentenced to death by stoning. That is the law. That is the Mosaic law. The Sharia law, it is working. And we must abide by it. We must abide by it. If you cannot, if you are not a law abider, don't come to this nation. Don't come to this nation. Being your Africa, being your United Kingdom, United States, it's a free place. It's a place that sins are legalized. You can date your, your, your dog. You can date your cow. You can date your sheep. You can marry your ox. You can, you can do whatever you want to do. But those that want to stand for God, they will always stand for God. That is why the, people, the Bible said, my people, Revelation, it said, come out from them. If you are a child of God, come out from this mess. If you are a child of God, be a child of God. Dress these saints. Come out from them. Don't be dressing anyhow. God bless you. My time is up. My time is up. We we'll meet tonight for midnight prayers. We we'll meet tonight for midnight prayers. The time is 10.45 p.m. GMT. 10.45 p.m. GMT. Kenya time is 1.45 midnight. Namibia and South Africa is 12.45 midnight. Um, Dubai is 2.45 a.m. Uh, Saudi Arabia is 1.45 a.m. Ghana is 10.45 p.m. In the evening, Nigeria is 11.45 p.m. United Kingdom, it is 10.45 p.m. Germany is 11.45 p.m. That is our time for meeting. Time for prayers tonight. Time for prayers tonight, yes. So whatever you are connecting us from, let us know where you are connecting us from and we will send you the time, the time of, um, of meeting for midnight prayers. We need to advise ourselves. We need to teach others the ways of God. We need to educate. We need to impact. We need to share. We need to show love. So all these things that we are teaching you, practice it. Add it to your daily life. And God will bless you. You and your generation will walk in the light of God. You will never walk in darkness. Because you've always, you are always doing the will, the will of God. 
and what God have cautioned you to do. God bless you. You are connected from Namibia. God bless you. If today is your first time, let me read some comments. Our time is up. Uh, our time is up. Please share for me, everybody. Share for me. Regina, God bless you. I can see you. Christina. <laughs> Christina, how are you? I can see you. God bless you. Um, Stanjua, God bless you. Mr. Imanomori, God bless you. Um, uh, Harriet. Harriet, where are you connecting us from? Eunice. God bless you. God bless you. Handrina. God bless you. Rosalind. God bless you. Jessica. God bless you. Oh, my dear P.S. Pastor. God bless you so much. say Andrews. God bless you. I can see you all. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. We will, we will meet tonight for midnight prayers. God bless you. If you go to YouTube, do well to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, precious appear gifting ministry precious appear gifting ministry instagram precious appear gifting ministry yes when you go to tiktok precious appear gifting yes so whatever you find us man of god eric god bless you yeah we'll meet tonight we'll meet tonight i want to go and prepare so try to join join midnight prayers and your life will never be the same god bless you all Love you. Shalom.